To start drawing the drinking glass, I'll maximize the front viewport and click on the polyline icon. I'll also turn on grid snap and start drawing the profile. To turn on the control points for the profile, I can use the F10 key or the points on command. You can drag the points around, but it's easier if you turn on the gumball at the bottom of the screen and then use the manipulator widget. To not snap to the grid, I'll disable the grid snapping at the bottom of the screen. So I'll edit the profile, and once I'm done, I can turn off the control points with the F11 key or the command points off. Now to round the intersections, I can go into the Curve Tools and use the command Fillet. Fillet lets me pick a radius in the command line, and then clicking on two separate curves makes a fillet in between them. To fillet all the kinks, all the sharp corners, at once I can use Fillet Corners, and again specify a radius in the command line. Zoom extends all viewports, ZEA. And I'll revolve this profile with the revolve command. And I want to snap to the endpoints of the profile, so I'll turn on my O snaps, my object snaps, and indicate that endpoints will be snapped to. So two clicks make a straight line and that is the axis of rotation for the revolve command and up in the command line I just clicked on full circle in order to make the revolved glass. If I right click over the name of the viewport I can switch the display mode to shaded and evaluate the model we just revolved. In order to visualize what the glass will look like in the real world I'll go over into the display panel and drop down into ray traced neon mode. I can disable the displaying of that profile curve. And I'll right click over any of the panels, display the ground plane panel and turn that on. I'll also expose the sun panel and enable the skylighting. Now Rhino Render is the active render engine at the moment and that exposes certain controls for Neon to use. I'll also expose the Materials panel, and I'll create a basic material, and drag and drop that onto the glass. I'll make it 100% transparent, and you can see that it doesn't look like a real glass right now because it's using the index of refraction of 1, which is that of air. So I can right-click over that IOR field for the basic material and switch it to glass, which is 1.52. Now we can light the scene in a variety of ways, but the skylight is using the environment. So if we change the environment in the environment panel to be a white color rather than the default gray, we get a slightly brighter result and we refract that white from the environment. We can also use light objects. So in the render tools, I can make a rectangular light. And position that light. Now, in addition to the skylight, this is a little bit too bright here, so if I go into Object Properties, there is a Light Properties section for this rectangular light when it is selected. And we can bump down the intensity there.
The next thing I'm going to do is to draw the liquid that would be in the center of this glass held by this vessel. And I'm going to turn on grid snap just to make the last two points of that polyline in a straight line and then turn grid snap off. And I'll revolve this profile. The important part is to place this wall of the liquid in the middle of the wall of the glass. This will make the refraction look convincing. And then I'll select that revolved surface and use the cap command as I just did there to cap off that top planar hole. I right clicked over the material swatch and duplicated it and I'll change the index of refraction to water 1.33 for that material. Now the display panel allows us to specify a solid color versus the environment. So you can do a lot here by changing the way that the visible background will look. If it's on Use Render Settings, then it accesses the environment. So back in the Environment panel, there's a drop-down for Choices, and we'll go to Environment and make a new basic environment. And here we can load an image. I'll load a high dynamic range texture. These are all HDR files that are available on Food for Rhino. And I'll load this one here called RISD Library. And you can see that the skylight is now using the color from that environment and also the glass and water materials are reflecting that environment. I'll change the visible background color to be white. Well at the same time I'm using the color for the skylight from that HDR file and we're also getting the reflections. I'm going to go into options Document Properties Rendering and change our gamma value to 2.2 to brighten up the scene. I'll go over to the water material and I want to change the color of it. So in that color swatch next to transparency we can just play with the color here. And we could also adjust the color of the reflection, give it a little bit of reflection, and then change the color created anywhere that is reflecting the light. Gives it a little bit more volume. The next thing I'd like to show you is using a custom render mesh. And this custom render mesh will be used to uh, essentially make our ice cube here. So I started with the box command and I'll drag that box into place using the gumball and scale it and rotate it. Now ice cubes very rarely have a sharp edge for, for long, so I'm going to round those edges using a custom render mesh. Here I'm just making a new material, change the IOR to water. I believe the index of refraction for ice is also available there and is only slightly different. If I zoom in on the box that represents the ice cube now, you can see those sharp edges. And I want to round those, but I don't need to fillet them on the actual NURBS geometry. Instead, in the Render Tools section, I can use Apply Edge Softening. 
and set a radius to round the edges of the render mesh itself versus the NURBS geometry. So this is just for visualization. And that object has an edge softening object property. That cube has that new property to it. So if we select it and go over into Object Properties, you'll see that section for it. And you can disable edge softening or change that radius used. Now I want to get rid of the triad, the X, Y, Z in the lower left corner. And you do that in Document Properties, Grid. And there's a checkbox there for Show World Axis Icon axes icon. And the other thing that I want to look at here is the size of the viewport. So I'll switch to shaded and I'll run the command new floating viewport and accept the default of copying the currently active one which was perspective. And then I'll make the new floating viewport neon. And then I'll go back into object properties and here I can now set the width and height to exactly the size and aspect ratio of the image that I want to capture. So I'll do 640 by 480. And I'll center the image and get it how I like. And then in order to save this image out as a variety of different file formats like JPEG or PNG, I'll go over into the Display Toolbar and that icon will run Capture Viewport to File or Capture Viewport to Clipboard. Thanks for watching.